Hey everyone, my name is Ronak back with another video. This is 25th video in the getting started with the machine learning playlist. And in this video, you are going to learn type 1 and type 2 errors in ML. So let us get started. Right before I dive into the concept of the type 1 and type 2 error, I want to actually give you a glimpse of the prerequisite that is required for this tutorial. So it is going to require the confusion matrix, which has been already covered in this playlist itself. Yet today I'll give you a small revision over it. And the two main concepts from the confusion matrix that you are going to focus on is the false positives and false negatives. So assume that the actual Y values is your Y testing data set, which has, let's say three zeros consecutively. So this is a binary classification problem where you have yes and no system and you apply a machine learning model. Like it can be any model that you want. Let us say logistic regression or K nearest neighbor, support vector machine, decision tree, random forest, anyone. But what you are particularly interested in is the predicted Y values. All right. So the actual values is form of the data set that I have with me. And I'm trying to predict using my model, a set of few values. So what this has to do with the confusion matrix, confusion matrix consists of four important concepts. So these are known as true positives, true negatives, false positives, false negatives. So what is true positives? So true positive is where you have the value one in your Y and your predicted value is also one that is true positive. All right. So uh, you can assume the fact that here we have one and here also we have one here. We have one here. We have one here. We have one here. We have one. So this is true positive. Similarly, there is true negatives. So in true negatives, the actual value is zero and the predicted value is also zero. So these two values in the first row, then we have false positives. Now what is false positive? False positives where there is zero in the actual value and one in the predicted value. This is false positive. And finally, we have false negative where we have one in the actual Y value and zero in the predicted. In the our example, we don't have that, but let us just uh, take hold of the concept itself. Now how to memorize this? Okay. So this is quite confusing for some people and uh, many people also have told me this when I actually conducted the workshops that this is very hard to memorize. So I'll just give you a gist associated with it. So check the, so there are two thumb rules and you have to continuously and you have to just memorize these. All right. So check if both numbers match. If so, they are true. And if they don't, they are false. And second thumb rule is if the predicted number is one, it is positive. And if it is zero, it is negative. Now, definitely these two lines are not going to give you a glimpse of the entire picture. So for that, I have an example, which will help you memorize this forever. So coming back to the data set that I have. So I have some actual values and the predicted values. Now, how I actually do it. Now, let us just consider these first two values. All right. Where we have zero in both the places. So actual is zero predicted is zero. Okay. So actual value that I have with me is zero and my model is also saying the value is zero. All right. So both are zeros. So both match. So it is true. In case if they wouldn't have matched, like one of them would, might have been one and another one zero, I would have said it was false. Now, second thing to remember. So this is, so this is the first thumb rule that you actually have went through second thumb rule check if there is zero or one in the predicted value now this is zero that is why it is negative if it would have been one in the predicted value it would have been positive this is only the rule all right if there is one in the predicted section we have positive if there is zero in the predicted section we have negative this is the thumb rule of it associated with it okay so that is the reason confusion matrix does seem overwhelming for some people now moving on to the next part let us consider these two. All right. So these would be an example of, so these would be an example of false because zero and one are not matching. All right. If it would have been zero or zero or one or one, it would have been true. So this is false in the first place. And we have ones in the predicted section, both of them. So it is positive. So this is false positive. Okay. So actual is zero predicted is one. So this is false. Second thumb rule. We have to check the second, the predicted section. We have one. So it is positive. Now moving on, we have actual is one predicted is one. So this is true because both of them match. And now we are going to check the predicted section that is one. So it is positive. So this is true positive. So finally, when we come across this, we don't have false uh, negatives in our example. 
but let us just move on so this is how the confusion matrix looks so in the confusion matrix there is an actual section and a predicted section so actual actual section is always going to have 1 and 0 you can either say it true or false or positive or negative or let's say parameters of your null hypothesis and the upper section over here is the predicted values okay so this is actual this is predicted where you have positive and negative so when there is one one that is both are matching true and the predicted is one it is true positive when there is one and zero it is false and after that you have positive and negative so when there is negative you have negative so it is zero okay so one and zero then you have zero and one this is also false but it is positive why because predicted is one and finally you have zero and zero where we have true negative so this is the way the confusion matrix is obviously i might have taken a different route last time but you can also use this technique if you feel comfortable so now we are going to look at the way our confusion matrix is going to be done so the first value that we have is true negative so i'll enter the one in the true negative section after that i have false positive so in this false positive, I'll be putting two in the false positive section because I have two false positives. So false because zero and one and one because it is positive. So it is false positive that is going to come over here. Then we have the true positives because both are one. And since we have don't since we don't have any false negatives, we will always say zero over here. So this is the way our confusion matrix is done. Now what all of this has to do anything with let's say our type 1 and type 2 error we will come to that okay, so what is type 1 and type 2 error which is the actual uh, concept of this video and why i actually went on the confusion matrix so the conversion of this is like this all right so your false positive is always considered as the type 1 error and your false negative is always considered as type 2 error now what is the importance of this this is extremely important because let's say in your classification problem you need to distinguish very very precisely which type of error has more dominance and how you can reduce it and this has a lot to do with your machine learning model i'll tell you with an example type 1 has significant importance similarly has so type 2 so i'll give you two examples with the type 1 so one person is tested let's say covid negative yet the system tests the person is covid positive okay so i can say not a big deal okay in this scenario why the reason is i don't have to see if my system fails to do that the what the person is going to go through let's say some another test okay which is what may way more advanced to figure out okay, so let's say the person is waiting for rapid antigen test and they are scared of so they just use your build system which is testing the covid patients so the person is actually covid negative based on his or her symptoms but at the end the system tells that uh, the person is covid positive so obviously he will rush to the hospital let's say to test with the rapid antigen test and he is going to come negative so he will be like okay so ml model failed not a big deal okay so type 1 error in this scenario is not so i would say to be concerned of okay it is not quite to be concerned of because person can test for actual if he is skeptical or if she is skeptical second case person does not have a weapon in their pocket yet let's say the metal detector that we have in uh, all of the let's say public places test the person as a weapon now this can be quite risky because some security executives are going to come and frisk you and they might check they might do a background check okay so that is going to actually be time consuming another example of this uh, quite important i would say is that uh, the mail that you have currently in your inbox is not a spam okay it, it is not a spam but my machine learning model is saying it is a spam so it is going to put an important mail in the spam folder so this is where the problem starts so type 1 error is very very efficient see both errors hold equal importance in their ways all right we will actually look at them in some other videos how we are going to tackle those okay but for now you can just focus on the concept of it now coming to the type 2 error now this one is quite dangerous why i would tell you one person is tested as covid positive yet the system tests the person is covid negative now this is very very dangerous okay for this scenario this is very very dangerous the reason is if someone is covid positive and they are not taking let's say any precautions or anything 
the the system is actually telling that the person is covid negative what would happen so the symptoms would aggravate and the person might get into trouble so you have to be very cautious when you have such problems okay if the person is let's say uh suffering with cancer or let's say any other diseases like hiv if there are some tests related to the person's health type 2 error is going to hold much more significance and you have to try to reduce it okay you cannot make a lot of mistakes with the type 2 error because it is not something that you should be very cool with okay so if you have built a system let's say which is testing the uh, covid positive patients so the person is actually covid positive all right in actual he or she is covid positive they are actually uh, interacting with the systems to uh, give the symptoms and everything but that system says that you are covid negative so this is very dangerous because they might not take any precautionary steps and the symptoms might aggravate and finally they can get into trouble second case person has a weapon in their pockets yet system tests the person does not have any weapon now this is also quite dangerous right because let's say if the metal detector is going to say the person has no weapons and let's say the security uh, security people don't actually frisk you so you might be actually carrying a weapon okay so not you i am saying but someone else let's say who is a potential threat to people so that is also a very very high risk thing okay so type 2 error needs to be handled so now i am explaining you the importance of these two errors and now in the next few couple of videos i'll show you how you can actually overcome them not overcome them particularly because there are no significant ways in ml in my opinion that which can help you get rid of them completely all right it is very very hard there is going to be always some kind of a uh, little bit of error but you can try your best to reduce the type to so it is actually uh based on let's say the scenario itself like i said the spam mail system where the mail is not a spam but is put it into a spam box which is very risky because there might be some let's say very important mail regarding your job or your college and it is going to go inside the spam folder so that is risky so you should in that scenario try to reduce the type 1 error but let's say just like the covid uh thing where the person is covid positive but your system says the person is covid negative now that is also quite risky okay because that is this is where you have to try to uh reduce the type 2 error okay so this is how the things work and in the next video we are going to look at something known as sensitivity and specificity all right so i hope you might have learned something or the other from this tutorial and if you like my content please do subscribe to my youtube channel and like this video all right so thank you for watching goodbye